Kia ora, uh, Namahinu Kia Koto Katoa. I just apologise in advance. My comments, introductory comments, were just a little bit longer because um, you'll note that Minister Hinole is with me, but I also uh, want to make some reference to the black ferns uh, as well. Uh, so uh, we'll do that first, and then and then get into that. Uh, first up today, I do want to acknowledge the outstanding success of the Black Ferns at the Rugby World Cup final over the weekend. I believe that their triumph at Eden Park is one of New Zealand's greatest sporting moments. The Black Ferns are extraordinary athletes, exceptional people and proud New Zealanders. As the Prime Minister said yesterday, rugby has always been our national sport, but the Black Ferns have made it feel like it's for everyone. Mm. To Ruahe Demont, Kennedy Simon and the whole squad, we are so proud of what you have done. To come back from the depths of despair in 2021 and to win this tournament is a reflection of the mana, wairua and mahi of champions. To the coaching team, especially the Professor Wayne Smith, the heartfelt thanks of a nation. The Black Ferns themselves are the first to say that they stand on the shoulders of giants. Those who have gone before as Black Ferns who did not get the support or recognition that they deserved. And so to those players, we say thank you as well. I want to acknowledge the England team who played such a massive part in the final and deserve plaudits for their commitment, exceptional performance and skill. To the organising committee of Rugby World Cup 2021, the chair Dame Julie Christie and chief executive Michelle Hooper and your team, congratulations on a superb tournament. It truly showcased all that is great about sport and in particular about women's sport and Aotearoa New Zealand. From the government's perspective, we have supported New Zealand rugby from the time of the bid um, through close to $20 million of support for the tournament. And that includes investment that is legacy making in terms of facilities at a number of grounds around New Zealand. To see more than 42,000 people at Eden Park was a huge vindication for that investment, let alone the long-term benefits that will flow. As part of the Women and Girls in Sports strategy that we launched in 2018, we said that we wanted to better value and make visible women's sport. And with three World Cups and the International Working Group on Women in Sport, which started uh, its meeting in Auckland today, we are delivering on those promises. Finally, I acknowledge the importance of building on the legacy of this tournament. This is a job for all of us, to ensure that women's rugby is supported at all levels that the Black Ferns are given the resources and game time befitting their status, and that we continue to encourage women and girls to participate and excel in all forms of sport and recreation. As I said, this is not just the responsibility of New Zealand Rugby or the government, but it is something that the community as a whole can get on board with. Turning to uh, a matter that we will deal with this week, uh, tomorrow I will join Minister Parker to announce an, our new resource management regime a faster, cheaper, better version of the Resource Management Act that government, opposition and industry alike have lamented for over 30 years. I'll leave the details of the announcement till tomorrow, but one thing I'd like to share today is how much our changes are estimated to generate in savings. Modelling from the Ministry for the Environment shows that by moving to the new resource management system, cost to users will decrease by about 19% a year, or about $149 million a year, and there'll be much more detail on that tomorrow. As you can see, today I'm accompanied by Defence Minister Penny Henare, and also our Vice Chief of the Defence Force, uh, Tony Davies, is here as well. We're here to announce further support for Ukraine in response to Russia's invasion, including an extension to our New Zealand Defence Force deployments and more funding for supplies. Since February, New Zealand has been providing a range of support to Ukraine as we play our part to uphold the rules of international law. That support to date has been significant and unprecedented, with more than $45 million of financial assistance, transport, equipment, the deployment of NZDF personnel and sanctions targeting over 1,200 Russian and Belarusian individuals and entities alongside trade restrictions. The current situation for Ukraine, however, is one of a continuing battle, with winter approaching and the further challenges that brings. All current deployments of NZDF personnel are also due to conclude at the end of this month. And so today, Cabinet has agreed to extend and make further deployments across five key areas and to provide further support across diplomatic channels. The first of which is $1.85 million to the World Food Programme, 
We know this war has disrupted global food supply chains and made food security around the world even worse, with many countries at risk of famine or in famine-like conditions already. This funding is matched by a further $1.85 million to the NATO Trust Fund, bringing our support there to over $10 million. The fund will focus on providing supplies to Ukraine, such as winter clothing, food rations, generators, first aid kits and fuel trucks, among other non-lethal military equipment. And finally, we will make further NZDF deployments across infantry training and intelligence in the UK, as well as logistics, liaison and administration in Europe. We will extend and in some cases expand those deployments until June or in some cases July next year. Briefly in summary, a team of 66 will head to the UK to help train Ukrainian soldiers. The 12 strong intelligence team in the UK will grow to 14. The four strong logistics team will continue from a hub in Europe. Our liaison officers in the UK and Europe will continue and eight personnel will be deployed to Europe to help with the overall administration. Of course, I want to be clear, no deployments will enter Ukraine and nor has any country sought to do that. The ongoing killing of Ukrainian soldiers and civilians as Russia's senseless attacks continue have seen New Zealand consistently pledge further support for Ukraine, including most recently in Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern's bilateral with Ukraine's Prime Minister in September. We know that this type of support from countries distant to Ukraine but who share our values is deeply appreciated because Russia's continued pursuit of this war is fundamentally wrong. We continue to call on Russia to reverse course and withdraw from Ukraine. I'm happy to take your questions. We'll start with all the questions on Ukraine so we can let Minister Henry go and then return to other matters. Jess. Yes.